Good morning, good morning, or good afternoon, I believe. Today, we're going to talk about a serious crisis that's affecting America. Before we get into all that, this is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather, serial entrepreneur. What we do here is we build businesses, we create cash flow, we help you out of the economic cellar that you're living in. Hold on a second. Let me go ahead and get some more people in the room. Let me see. Let me see. Let's see. You know, it was a very interesting weekend. Very, very interesting. Um, we don't have football going on right now, so that's kind of uh, so, created that's a problem. We got the combine going on. We got some folks who are here. Hold on a second. All right. There we go. There was this article uh, on CNBC Make It. Nearly one in three American workers run out of money before payday, even those earning over a hundred thousand dollars. This is one of the issues that I talk about at Savage Finance. It's very interesting how so many people don't have a financial education. This is a big, big problem. It's a huge problem. And one of the things is, hold on. One of the things is people fine. don't want to change their habits. We're about to go all up into this. Um, Let's talk about even the people making $100,000 a year. Let, let's go ahead and say spending money is fun. And it's fun. Slap down that credit card, slap down the cash, get what you want, bounce on with your life. Spending money is fun. Having a budget is responsible, but that's not sexy. Spending money is sexy. There are many people who just do not want to sit down and properly manage their money. There is no reason, even if you're living in California, living in New York, that you should run out of money before you run out of month. If you're making six figures, there's no reason for it. Many people will say that's just the way it is, but these are choices. No one told you to go out and get that Dodge Hellcat Red Eye with the $1,500 per month payment with $250 per ins for insurance and maintenance, and you're almost paying $2,000 for this car. Nobody told you to do that. You did it because you wanted to do it. This is one of the biggest problems. Um, people, like, you know, with me, I was making a lot of money, and there's this uh, yard bird who says, I've claimed to have started many building, many businesses making multiple millions of dollars. I've only claimed one, and it's this one. So if you're going to repeat or regurgitate, listen first, boy. Because, see, this is the thing, because when people get off into assumptions, and they start saying stuff that I've not said or even represented, I get a little cranky because this is another feminine dude who's just jealous. It's like, 
well, I don't know about that. And, you know, you can see the receipts on this YouTube channel. And what's, what's really interesting is, and I'm going to tell you how that attitude shapes into this financial mess. People don't want to be practical. People don't want to be real. Uh, people don't want to do the hard work. Because when you sit down and you hate on somebody because they've done something that you haven't done, that shows your own inadequacy. That shows your own lack of worth, your own lack of self. Because one of the big issues that is happening in America is people get paid and they're reckless with money. They're absolutely reckless. Uh, I was trying to help someone out who had bought a car and it, it's just, um, it, it, it's a dumpster fire. And part of the reason is, you know, that we have so many people in these situations is no one like me has come up into their life and said, look, this is how you do it. This is how you set it up. Because uh, I'm going to go hard on Savage Finance. I'm going to go real hard because that's needed. So y'all be sure to subscribe and watch each and every video. Let me get off in these uh, comments. Y'all y'all get started early. <laughs> What's up, True Savage? Thank you, Jeremy, Tracy, Andre. Short change. I hope everyone has a mandatory 20K in savings or checking account. That's on point because part of the problem that people are in this pickle is the lack of delayed gratification. Because how many, how many times have I said this? If you're making six figures, you shouldn't have a car payment. How many times? I, I, I can't keep track of all the times I've said that. And it comes back to having the proper financial education, and also dealing with the reality. Power to achieve. The corona fear will crush the economy. Yes, blind and Buddha, this is true. There are many people who have no clue about Finance. <laughs> Tax refunds. Kevin Davis, if you can't manage little money, you sure as hell can't manage big money. This is true. Two hundred, two hundred month look towards a Ross IRA for fifteen look years looks real nice. Uh, you can go ahead and get the course, Pody. Indeed, all adult males should have at least 30K as a clutch nest egg. Short change. I know a guy. This 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 reminds me of something, short change. I know a guy that makes minimum wage. He showed me his receipts. He had 247K in his savings account. He used to work with this girl. And this was one of my financial mentors. She was a certified nurse assistant. And she had a proper financial upbringing. When she was 16, her father said, you know, you should save all your money. Your mom and I, we, we buy you food. You got a place to stay. You should save your money. So she started saving 50 to 100% of whatever she made. So when she turned... 
she was able to pay cash for her first car. And she she lived in the house that she paid cash for. I want you to understand this. Certified nurse assistants don't make as much money as lab assistants, but because she had a proper financial upbringing and she had been saving money because the time I met her, she was 30 something. So she had been saving money 20 years. And, you know, she's like, my car is paid off. You know, I put half down on my house. I got that paid off in four years. She just had some really good money management habits. And she was, you know, she had a paid off car, paid off house and money in the bank. And she didn't make a lot of money. Now, she would hustle. She would work overtime. But she didn't make crazy buku money. I mean, for her life that she had. I mean, can you imagine resting your head on a pillow of a bed that's in a house that's paid off? She, her father sat her down and schooled her on the principles, and she was living better than people who made three times her money because she wasn't blowing her money. Thank you, Jason. Latino Ferguson, people who win the lottery run out of money within six to seven years, people with a poverty mindset cannot win financially. This is true. So once again, you got to master saving money. And this is one of the big issues. Because there's a video by one of these financial guys who's like saving money as you're losing money. First of all, going back to short change, everybody should have twenty to thirty thousand dollars cash money in some bank, not in your 401k, not in your Roth, not in the index fund, but cash money in the bank that you can put your hands on if you need to do it. This is the reality. And so many people don't even have $2,000 cash. They don't even have $2,000 cash in the bank. So one of the, the, this is a big, big issue because on my financial journey and my financial education, like, you know, on Savage Finance, we will get to investing in Roth IRAs and stuff. But first, we're going to do the foundational stuff, things that you need to do before, because I see all these YouTube channels where they talk about people investing money and there's this broad audience. And what about the things you should do before you should start investing? Because, you know, this is something that people, I got a thousand bucks. I got five thousand dollars. What should I invest in? Here's the blunt truth. One thousand to five thousand dollars invested in something like a stock fund, an index fund or bond. We're talking about pennies on the dollars. We're talking about that money would literally take five to seven decades to become something worth having. So I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to talk about that stuff. My mother-in-law got 60 G's from a lawsuit and spent it all in six months. She spent the money on crap and lent money out to family, which they never repaid. Let me tell you about this. And this, this is one of the reasons that so many Americans don't have any money. Is they feel that if you get money, you have to do something unethical. There are many people who feel that there is nobility in being poverty because you're keeping it real. You're keeping it real. I ain't nobody. I ain't judging nobody. I'm just out here trying to live my best life, taking it one day at a time. Sounds good in theory, but that's kind of a poverty mindset because you should have a mindset to get economically ahead. 
and all of these social ramifications and social mores and all these other things, they're not going to help you. They're not going to help you get ahead. I was dealing with someone who had this big heart and was wanted to help out the world. But on a personal level, this person was financially drowning. And this is something that happened. So there was this guy in California. He let these two homeless people move into his house. And they were more concerned with helping other homeless people than getting a job. It's like, hey, we, we want to help out the people on the streets because we know how hard it is. And without this guy saying, hey, y'all can live with me rent free. They would be homeless. And this mindset of helping people is noble. But self-love is the greatest love of all. And if you're going to allow yourself to crash and burn while you're helping other people, you don't love yourself. You, you just don't love yourself. The boss, 2000, I'm trying to work at a job I don't like while saving money for a better future. That's the tough part. The Boss 2000, you, you have a power in that. You can go out and get a job you like. Because here, here's how people get scammed. Hey, you can invest $1,000 in this investment and get $1,000 a month. And you don't have to do any work. I want you guys to hear me. I want you guys to pay attention. This will be a common theme for Savage Finance. Do more. Not less. Not sit at home. Do more. <clears throat> Look at Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey's a multimillionaire several times over. He has a show. He has his uh, courses. He has his church events. He has his organization. He's doing more. He's not doing less. He's doing more. And for you guys to have the lives that you want, you got to do more. Not less. This this is the fantasy. This is the dream that, you know, and I'm not <clears throat> picking on you, the boss 2000. You know, there are many people who have jobs that they don't like. <clears throat> so one of the things you can do is find something about that job you like or go out and get another job because everyone's like, man, you know, I, I see this all the time. It's like, I don't want to work. What can I invest in that's going to pay me money to sell my butt? And for me, as a person who enjoys working, enjoys producing content, enjoys creating courses, enjoys putting in, I enjoy that. What is with this notion where people don't want to work? Where does this come from? So 60 gone. Oh, man. I remember when I was living in the hood, there was this girl. Her grandmother died and left her some money. You know what she did? She bought a BMW with her drug dealer boyfriend. And that money was gone in four months. Money that took a lifetime to build up was gone in four months. You know, like, like I said, when I, when I started this YouTube channel and I wrote my book and I, I just tucked a lot of money away because I didn't know when it was going to stop. But there are people who feel that when they hit a good lick, it's just going to keep giving. It, it's just not the case, man. Thank you, Engineer Life Skills. All right, Turf. 401 trucker, I know, man. My mother in law got a settlement for 50K, spend it all on the casino, furniture, clothes, and a car. Yep, they really do. Sierra.
Big Big Mac stepson blew 120k life insurance money in about eight months. This is common. They say the first and second generation makes the money, and the third generation spends it. All right, Cosmic Wisdom, that's a good plan. Four one trucker, it's money out there. This is one of the things. This is definitely one of the things. Engineer Life Skills, my sister blew 250K in six months, then called me for rent money in month seven. Yes, 4144 trucker. There are piles of money out here. Thanks, James, man, for the $2 super chat. Lewis, I have a sister that wasted 30000 in two months. She's a pill popper. She never even gave my aunt who gives us all one fucking dollar. Power of the Achievement knew a guy who won 100K and blew it in nine months. You know, this is one of the biggest problems. And this is why I've created Savage Finance to teach people how to manage money, how to make money, how to save money, and how to invest money. Because um, one of the things that I want you guys to understand, it's a choice whether or not you want to be average. You want to be the average person, just go out and spend all your money, get a car loan, finance your house, and student loan debt, and just be in a world of debt. Because... One of the things that got me was, you know, we've been having these these conversations for a while, that the average person, if they had to come up with $2,000 cash in 30 days, they could not do it. That is scary. That is very, very scary. So one of the, the solution is manage your money or your money is going to manage you. This is the truth. Anthony Johnson, once I laid the foundation of seven places where I have money, I've never been broke again. I have not been broke. I was, last time I was broke, I was in that boarding house. It was the last time that I was broke. And I know, you know, being broke is horrible. Into uh, Anthony Johnson's, like, I keep cash money on me. I keep cash money in the, well, several banking accounts. And I keep money on my credit card. So those three places that I always have money. Because one of the things is you've got to show some self-restraint because I want you guys to do this exercise. Do it today. I want you to create a plan on what you would do if $100,000 came into your life, $250,000 came into your life, half a million dollars came into your life, a million dollars came into your life. Or $5 million. I want you to have a constructive plan. Like, you know, even though I don't play the lottery, if I somehow came into, let's say I won the Powerball and it was like $300 million, And I took the cash option and I got like 200 like $180 million. 
all $180 million would go out and buy income producing real estate. I would spend that money so quickly. I, well, first thing is I will assemble a team. I will get me a, another CPA, an attorney, and a real estate agent. And we would go out and find the best deals. I would buy these. Pro I wouldn't just, you know, because I got the money. I wouldn't just pay the money. I would get the best deal I could. But all $180, $180 million would go towards income producing real estate. I would not put it in the stock market because uh, uh, there are some videos I got coming up that's going to talk about that. Because I, I could tell you now, if you had $200,000 in dividend real estate, right? That would get you about $7,000 in dividends. You had a $200,000 house that you rented out for $1,500 times 12 is 18000 minus 10%. That's 16000 That's this That's not. That's almost $10,000 more in one year. Then if you had dividend producing uh, dividend stock, $10,000 a year more. Once again, you know, and th this is going to be part of the financial education at Savage Finance. You always have to crunch the numbers. Amen. Shabazz, people that don't earn their money will not keep it. It doesn't have any value. This is like after my heart attack and my ex wanted to be placed on the bank accounts in case something happened to me. I wasn't real comfortable with that. You know, one of the best pieces of advice I got is like never entrust your money to someone that didn't help you earn it. Never. You know, I, I'm just not giving that kind of control because one day I can wake up and the money's gone. And based on her behavior, she could have did some. She could have really wiped me out financially. And I would have been like, well, we could sue her. Because see, this, this is the thing. When you put someone on your checking account and they take the money out, you can't call the police on them because they had valid access to their, their name was on the account. They had asset, They had rights to that money. They had rights to that money. And one of the things is that people are not paying attention to the math. Jerry Marcellus, you know, creating a brand, a brand is one part of earning money online. But there are so many ways to earn money online. Honey Bunny, I finally got sick of myself and started throwing all my extra cash at my student loan. I realized that's the last thing that's keeping me from wealth building. It's my only debt. Wow. <laughs> yeah, debt. Like one of the first things before you start trying to be quote an investor is you got to retire debt. You got to get rid of every piece of debt in your life. And this is some that many people cuz uh this is why Bitcoin was so popular cuz people thought that they can buy a little bitcoin a day and that it would appreciate so much faster than the debt that they'd be able to cash out and roll out. <clears throat> Y'all remember when Bitcoin was going crazy? I was an early buyer of Bitcoin. I bought my Bitcoin in like 2010. 
And I sold it all in 2000, you know, in eight years, seven, I held on to it for seven, eight years. And I sold it all because people were flipping out. Oh, get, get some Bitcoin, get some Bitcoin, get some Bitcoin. And I started talking against Bitcoin because this is something I noticed. The people who had money, who had good business bottles, they weren't buying Bitcoin. It was like, I already got money. I don't have to buy no Bitcoin. And I had people on my page clowning. And I made prediction after prediction after prediction after prediction that came true with Bitcoin. And right now, let's see. What is Bitcoin doing right now? It's rose a little bit. It's $8,874. So it, it crashed all the way down to 3000 and it's going back up to 8000 almost 9000 It's going to crash again. It's going to crash again. See, this is one of the big issues with people and money. People don't want to put in the work. Roger Greenwood, I'm thinking an interesting topic is the importance of protecting your assets. As I come from a family of habitual savers, and the one thing I notice is they don't protect all their assets. LLC, baby, LLC. Gerald Lofton, I make more with my commercial real estate than I did with my res. Hey, you could charge a gang for re- you know commercial real estate. <laughs> that ain't me, JC. LM463. If you can go to college for free or cheap, do it. But don't put yourself in a hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt for a degree that's only gonna enable you to get a job paying 30k. <sighs> Oh, man, that's where I got into the LLC game. That's where I learned about paying cash for cars. That's where I learned, like, you know, this one dude, the guy who owned the company, he was worth about $20, 25000000 million, and he had his wife on payroll as an insurance policy. I could pay her $68,000 a year for 20 years, and it would still be way less than if we got divorced and she got half. You see, she can never say that she didn't have no job. Even though she stayed at home with the three kids and stuff, she still got a check. I mean, you know, because you talk to some big toe rip, well, I ain't paying her no $68,000 a year. It was a hedge against the future in case something funky happened. She would not be in that position where she could say, hey, um, I am going to take you for half your paper. She couldn't do it. Leah died. That could be a problem. Gerald off the name. You're not lying. My sister took 60,000 cash from me. Plus I paid off the mortgage where she was living. Good Lord, Gerald, that that's 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 tragic because, see, this is where I was. You know, all this money I have, I've earned it myself and no one helped me. No one helped me get here. I got here by myself and only my name is on the checking accounts. And I, I've just heard too many stories of a guy putting it like this. This is a lesson I learned. This was a guy who used to work at business environments. He was, uh, he had a wife and her wife, you know, it's like, you know, if they had a Facebook page, they would probably have the same Facebook page. They would share everything. Right. And, um, well, 
she stepped out on him and she took a million dollars out of the joint checking accounts. She completely took all of the money, cheated on him, took the money and tried to lock him out of the house. But, you know, he got an attorney because, you know, this is one of the best things about being rich. You have rich friends. He was able to borrow money because she she clearly cleaned him out. And when he told the story, uh, the guy at Business Environments loaned him like half a million dollars because he knew he was good for it. And so he was able to get back in the house, get an attorney. And then um, during the divorce, he got it set up where she had to start paying him back some of that money. Because she took joint assets, so she took all of it. And that that story resonates with me because I'm like, I'm never going to put myself in the position where some woman I'm with can just take half my money like that. It ain't happening. And this is, you know, because essentially when you give people access to that type of cash, you know, people got rich folks fantasies. This is... This is why so many people who inherit money go through it so quick. They have what I call financial thirst. They want that car. They want that shirt. They want that watch. They want those drinks. They want those shoes. They, they have all of these wants. And then this money comes in their life and it's like, I could go out and get all of this stuff. And this is one of the things that I'm going to do with uh, Savage Finance is you should reward yourself. Turf. You know, we're going to talk about stocks. Uh, you were engineering. If you're going to get a degree, get a degree in engineering, electrical engineering, computer engineering, a mechanical engineering. That's the way to go. I know the says it read. I mean, there was that place was rich in financial gain. JC, if you have no debt, paid off home, what would you advise someone to do? Just take that money and start and putting it in an investment vehicle. Get into, you know, this is wild. You know, if you have a house that's paid off, you have no debt, you could go out and get probably two or three mortgages for rental real estate. And since your primary home is paid off, you could get tenants to pay that off or you could just save up and, you know, get some cheaper houses cash, but invest your money. Thank you. Please subscribe to my boring channel. Kyle for gaming. That's why I'm never getting married. All right. Green machine. Cool. Black season. My neighbor's brother had a similar situation. The only difference is he had a, had a stroke. His girl took his money and was seeing another guy. When he found out that she was gone, he committed suit. Wow. Wow. See, th this is one of the things like uh, anyone I'm dating, I keep out my business because one of the things I've learned is my business has supported me through thick and thin. You know, and you guys, you guys who buy the courses, I really appreciate you guys. You guys, you know, I, 
I've had some people, I was dating this one chick and she did not like some of the content on here on Hustlers Kung Fu, right? And she actually tried to tell me how to, she said, well, you should do this. And I said, you're talking to someone who has no personal debt. You're talking to someone that has no credit card debt. You're talking to someone that has no student loan debt. You actually have all of that, but you're trying to tell me how to manage money. I was like, I find that highly ironic, don't you? And she got an attitude. I was like, I don't have no debt. Don't, you know, first rule of thumb, don't listen to broke people on how to make money. You're broke. How much debt do you have? I have none. That car out there is paid for. All this furniture in here is paid for. I did not do the rooms to go. The furniture was paid for before it was delivered. And I don't shop like you. I don't run my life like you. So don't tell me how to run my business when you're not doing when you're doing a crappy job of running your life. And she really got irritated then. She got hot. And she said, Well, I think I'm going home. I said, Go home. Cool. Go home. Because one of the things that I know in history is my witness. The golden rule is he who has the gold makes the rules. It doesn't change. Uh, refinance up to 70, 80 percent, get four plexus with broker instead of a bank so you can get more than three loans at a time after a year. The loan seasons with a renter. Fajita, what's more important, cash flow or opportunity cost? That's a really interesting question. I think it depends upon the situation because cash flow is super important in anything you do. But like, let's say, let's go back to $200,000 in dividend stock, right? $200,000 in dividend stock is going to get you about $7,000 dividends a year. So you take your 200K and put it in dividend stock versus one piece of real estate. You could take your 200K and buy one piece of real estate and rent that out for 1500 bucks a month. The one piece of real estate is going to outperform those $200,000 in dividend stocks. Now, the pros and cons, like stocks are easy to sell. House, not so easy. But from a financial standpoint, this house is going to consistently out earn that $200,000 in dividend stock. So what you have to do is keep buying stock to get more dividends. Whereas you buy this one house, it's going to appreciate. You're going to be able to up the rents over the years. It's just going to make more money, more money. <laughs> so the opportunity cost of not buying a house and buying stock could cost you ten to $12,000 per year. So it really depends upon the situation. Green machine. I was just telling her the truth because one of the things that I've had is I've had women in my life try to tell me how to run my business. And whenever that happens, I just break it to the real. I'm like, are you debt free? I am. Is your car paid off? Mine are. You have credit card debt? I don't. I live on 7% of my income. How much money do you have to take to live on? Oh, your whole check? You talking to me about managing money and making money, but you're doing a pretty crappy job of it yourself, sweetie. Just have to kick it to the real because one of the things is, and especially with the disruptive mail channel, I've had a few people who found the channel and they were like, look, that's me. You don't like it? Fine. You can go because that ain't going to change. I'm not going to stop doing it because I'm helping men. There's a lot of women out here who run all kinds of games on men. One of the biggest one is you the daddy when you ain't the daddy. That's disgusting and despicable, but you don't hear these women talking about that.
Well, once again, um, you got to look at what's your goal, because one of the things I'm going to do with Savage Finance. And here it is. Y'all be sure to jump on that. Is break down. There's a lot of finance channels on YouTube and none of them really deeply emphasize the power of doing more and making more money. The the big dream is to go ahead and get you some stock. Like, I mean, I'm going to just tell you, one of the reasons that I started a personal finance channel is these guys get the highest CPMs. I mean, you could have a small personal finance channel and make 30 to 50 K a year easy because of the ads they run on these channels. So a lot of these guys who are saying this stuff, the bulk of their income is YouTube money. It's not from their investments. There's a guy who started a new channel. It's the, mag- well, a year ago, Magic of Finance. He's rolling up. He's got the dividend stock that pays 7000 but he made 200000 from YouTube last year. In one year, he made more money than he, he he's making from his dividend stock. So once again, you know, stocks are real attractive, you know, and one of the, one of the things is he's one of those cheap people. And I'm not going to teach people to be cheap because once again, you got to have fun in life. You got to money was meant to be spent and enjoyed at some point. This is why I got the BMW M5. You know, a guy this morning was like, man, I've seen this car a few times, man. This is a beast. Money's meant to be enjoyed. I took an $80,000 depreciation hit on it, and I'll take some more. And at one point, it's probably going to be worth like ten. dollars It's probably going to stop at maybe nine or 10000 And these be facts, but I offset it that by earning more money. Never was taught about credit from a parents or a school. Herbert Scott, I know, because I was watching a video that was like how to get passive income. And to her credit, she said the truth because you take a thousand dollars, you invested in this. You're going to get like 17 bucks a year. I mean, you know, I give her credit on that, but people have to understand that to get large amounts of passive income, you're going to have to do a lot. Like I had huge amounts of passive income from a book I wrote. I spent three months writing this book and I think it made like 2.2 million collectively. So $2.2 million for like three months of work is great because I wrote the book once, but it wasn't completely passive because I kept promoting the book on the channel for years and years and years. And in in many of my writing groups, I had an issue with a lot of writers because writers are really artistic. They live in their heads They're And the stuff I was like, this is what you got to do to get your book to sell. And they were like, I don't want to do that. And I'm just sitting there like, all right. You know, I remember I went to this uh, writing group and I was like, this is what my writing income bought. And it's like, whoa. Paid for it before it was off the lot. Yeah, Roger, you do. Good Lord, Goddess Noel. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremiah Hamilton. That's a beast move right there. That's a beast move. Because see, one of the things you have to understand is where you are financially and you have to play your position until you get more money. Sierra, there's a lot. I mean, how many Mari Povich paternity court, how many shows are there about this issue? And no one's, you know, and the women can do it and they, they do it because, all right, I ain't he did that. No one does anything to him. 
if this was a crime punishable by jail time, I guarantee you a lot of these false paternity claims, because if she was like, if she knew that she could go to jail, if she was wrong, she's like, look, you know, uh, this may not be your kid. We need to get a test. They'd be more forthcoming than versus this. I'm pregnant. You won't, you won't ask me for a deal. I'm not lying to you. This is your baby. This is your baby. I can't believe. Oh, tears, tears, tears. I mean, so many guys have gotten that message. I had a friend, and um, each one of his kids, he had a test done for each one of his kids. He said, I grew up in a neighborhood where, you know, dude paying child support for 18, 19 years, come to find out it wasn't even his kid. He had DNA testing. Dude was married. And he had his wife do a DNA test on each one of his kids. And I don't even know all his kids look like him. So, you know, that was wow. Well, the boss, I don't really think that's going to be the case. Um, but once again, like in my case, I, I, I will share something. One of our deals was that, you know, I was paying all the bills and I asked her to put 1500 bucks away per month in case we ever needed it. And she could never do this. Now, the chick was making 130 K a year. She could not consistently do it. And I think presently she has 80 to $90,000 worth of debt. And she just, you know, cause it, it's funny how, when I date someone like this channel, they don't really watch the uh, savage finance. I just started, but they go straight to disruptive mail. Go straight to it. And I'm telling you, it ain't going to change. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing. And if that bothers you, you have to go away. So be it. Because this is one thing, to thyself be true. I know that I help a lot of men understand the game. I help a lot of people with this channel. I help a lot of people with disruptive mail. And I'm going to help a lot of people with savage finance. I do good work here. And the thousands of emails and messages and personal thank yous I've gotten, which I really love getting. So thank you for sending that. Just affirm what I'm doing, because one of the things is I, I'm going to speak the truth about money from a position of someone who's lived in abject poverty and made it to the millionaire ranks. Now, one of the things that you've got to understand, that isn't a typical journey. Typically, you live and die in the social economic class that you're born in. You live and die by it. I know, Turf. Sarah, I ain't mad at him. I mean, yeah, he did it. This is my dude. He he did it. All three kids, he had them tested. He's like, I got to know for sure. And this is the only way that I would know for sure. Well, Sierra, th this is, you know, one of the reasons for disruptive male teaching men how to pick better women. Because there's a lot of wonderful, great women out there. There's a lot of trash out there. There's a lot of craziness out there, but there's a lot of good women out there. And one of the things I do, because, you know, with the chicks who I've been messing with who find disruptive male, I was like, have you watched all the videos? No, I just watched your latest one and I didn't like it. Well, watch all of them before you judge me. There's 176 of them. Get to watching. Start watching it. How I teach guys not to drink and smoke with women and get them high because a woman cannot grant consent when she's um, impaired. She can't. That's statutory rape. 
So, you know, what about, what about that video? What about the video talking about, you know, how men should take women on dates? You know, it, it, it's funny how they cherry pick what they want to watch. And I'm, I'm, I've come on a new policy. Anyone I'm dating, we're not going to chalk about my work. I got a friend, Alpha M, and we had this conversation. And um, he makes a lot of money. He makes a lot of money. And, you know, people see him making videos and stuff. They don't understand just how brilliant this guy is. And, you know, it, it gets, he's like, you just can't talk about certain things with normal people. You just can't because they get in their feelings. They start acting weird. <laughs> yeah, being born, you know, because one of the things is the, the power of money. And the greatest power of money you have is choice. And, you know, there are so many people out here, like they did this study of this couple that made like $500,000 a year and talking about how they were struggling. They were fully funding their 401ks. Their kids were in private school. I'm like, you ain't struggling, man. There ain't no real struggle. There's no struggle. There ain't no struggle at all. But one of the things that I see happening is, you know, like I said, be sure to get on Savage Finance because I'm going to break those concepts down there. Because one of the things I want you guys to understand is how to financially change your life. Now, one of the things I'm not going to teach there is the pathologically cheap method. Uh, this is a method that many people deploy that, you know, they're, they're just ridiculously cheap. Like Graham Stephan, he makes 160000 a month and he spends like hardly anything. And I'm just like, if you spent thirty k a month, which in California, which is $330,000 a year, that's a great life. You still have 130 to invest and save. Hello? This reminds me of a house that caught fire in the West End. And it was in the newspaper. When the firemen were putting out the fire, they found like $600,000 cash money up in the attic. And they did an article about this guy because he died in the fire. And his girlfriend was like, you know, he would make me pay for dates. I don't I don't really look up to pathologically cheap people because there's a way to design your life. There's a way to make money. There's a way to have a good life, make good financial and prudent decisions and enjoy life and not be pathologically cheap because the pathologically cheap people. Yeah, they're going to die with money. And they're going to leave a lot of money to other people because they didn't enjoy it. I remember one of my friends, he was rich. And, you know, one of the things he did was before he died, he gave each one of his kids a million dollars. It's like he paid the taxes. They got a straight up million. He said, that's your inheritance. He said, because I'm going to die broke because I'm going to take trips. I'm going to enjoy this money. And as far as I know, because I haven't talked to him in a while, I think he's still alive. He he enjoyed his life. He first class hotels, first class flights, fancy champagne. And I met his kids and they was like, they couldn't be mad at him. He took care of them. He put them through college. They went to private schools. He gave them a million bucks a piece. And more importantly, you know, because uh, both kids. They didn't blow the money. They took the money and they invested each penny of it because this is the lessons that he taught them. He taught them to be investors. So that's where they put the money. All right, Jay Wills. So, you know, th this is one of the things 
that happens that people get caught up in. You know, if, if people you become pathologically cheap or they spend too much money and they don't exist in this happy medium right in the middle. Yes. All right. I'll be down in a minute. Um, one of the things that they don't do is live in that happy medium. So what I want you guys to do is subscribe to Savage Finance for these financial lessons that come in your way. And I will see you guys in the next video. Also, another thing I want you to do is to go to the front of the channel and pick a playlist and start watching videos. There's tons and tons of content on this channel designed for you. So with that, I'll see you guys later.